They are the founders of Volvo. This is uh, from Korea? Busania. Yes. So, as a Volvo employee, you're a little proud about the 3.0 seat bump. We are, we're up at around 50 different cab variants. And over the years, it becomes more and more tailor-made, more and more specific. One motor, two gear gearbox, and the conventional driveline. Welcome to the exhibition at Vetex. Uh, we just rebuilt Vetex uh, two years ago, or the exhibition. So the bricks here, the design of windows, the concrete bottom there, it's all fetched from how the BC building was looking at that time when everything started. Through the endless nights, into the break of dawn, truck drivers are out there to move the world we want to live in. That's what we do, or actually what our customers do. These two gentlemen on the picture here, that's Asar Gabrielsson and Gustav Larsson. They are the founders of Volvo. They decided somewhere in 1925 that they were going to build vehicles together. Now with Volvo trucks, 1928 is much more important, we think, because that's when we got the first truck. February 20th, 1928, that's when we got the first truck from the assembly line. We like to keep the driver in focus. He's the important guy behind the steering wheel, right? He should be comfortable, he should be safe, he should drive a vehicle that he really likes and enjoys. In Europe, we have more than 2,500 workshops with skilled mechanics. Does anyone of you know where this boat is from? Yeah. So, oh. here it is live. <laughs> Yes. Anyone? Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 I would say that we try, we strive to, to uh, I mean, we, we are a global player. So, of course, we try to find pictures and surroundings from all over the world. Now, we talked about the three point seat belt, right? It's a Volvo invention for sure. That's why it is the same standard, the same, looks the same way all over the world today. In all over, all different brands, different machinery, whatever. And we've saved millions of life with the three lives with the three-point seat belt. So, as a Volvo employee, you're a little proud about the three-point seat belt. Okay, we have the toughest legislation in the world when it comes to crash testing of cabs. Or we had, I should say. 1960, we got the Swedish cab strength test. Uh, today, we have a European legislation that we have to follow. Uh, but at Volvo, we still do our tests based on the old Swedish one because that one is still tougher than the European one. We will jump over to here. We have, come mm -hmm. so, we have got something we call the FUP, Front Underrun Protection. Also a Volvo invention we launched in 1996. Legal requirement on all heavy trucks from 2003 all over Europe. It protects cars from sliding under the truck in case of a frontal collision. And it's also stiff enough to activate the car's safety system because it's really important that the airbag blows immediately in the car. You have been test driving, right? Do you know? Did you feel the Volvo Dynamic Steering, the VDS? Yeah. Standard steering gear with hydraulic servo, no changes. Then we added an electric motor and a powerful computer. So we read steering forces 2,000 times a second. And then this electric motor prevents any vibration from reaching the steering wheel. So just a quick stop here to show you a little bit of the Volvo flavor all over the world. You see Europe and Asia, the green cabs here, approximately 30 different variants of metal. Now we talk the metal structure. If we add the US cabs, we add 20 more. So we are, we're up at around 50 different cab variants. We go for the FH, it's a normal clipper. The Globetrotter, Globetrotter XL, and Globetrotter XXL, which is a little bit extended. So that's how we, we measure it. The new Volvo FH can come with adaptive high beams. We have 12 sectors, 12 LEDs on each side so that we can switch off and on. Meaning that we can have full high beam to the left in the wood on the side of the road. We can have a slot where we have meeting a car without high beams and we have full high beams on our own lane and on the right side and the wood. I hope personally that this will be a legal requirement on all vehicles all around the world because this is really safety and a lifesaver. On a Volvo truck you can have eight cameras connected. We are talking six digital ones and two analog ones. And analogs is because if we connect a trailer, we can have analog cameras on the trailer. There we can't have the digital ones. We can have one, two or four cameras visible, as you see here, at the same time on the seat on display. So if you are in suburban areas with a lot of 
kids, people around the truck, you can make sure you see, especially behind the truck and on the sides also maybe. If you are on tight corners, construction areas, whatever, it's also beneficial. You might want to have a camera for your superstructure. Let's say you have a hook lift. You can have the camera so that you very easy find your, your uh, load carrier back there with a the hook without uh, bending out, looking in the mirrors. You find it really easy and get the hook onto your truck. This is just a part, a flavor of our daily business. This is trucks. They are not two similar trucks, we used to say. This is just a small part of all the variants and customer-specific demands there are on different transport. And over the years, it becomes more and more tailor-made, more and more specific. The first truck in 1928 had a three-gear unsynchronized gearbox. And this iShift is still a three-gear unsynchronized gearbox, actually. It's a manual gearbox with an automated gear shifting system. Meaning that as a driver, while well, you've tried it, you handle it as an automatic gearbox. But the gearbox is manual. The computer handles everything when it comes to, to handling the, the uh, acceleration, acceleration, the clutching, the gear selecting. No synchronization rings is needed because the computer knows exactly when to switch gears. So that's why it still can be unsynchronized. And then we've got a range gear and a, a split gear on this gearbox also. So we have 12 gears, a little bit more than the first one. The computer reads a lot of sensors all over the truck. We know if we are loaded, the way the road is leaning, how much you are accelerating, etc., etc. And it cal calculates 50 times a second what gear you should have. And that turbine has a secondary side where we increase pressure on the air inlet then to get more air into the engine. Now we continue using that air pressure into a second turbine. That turbine simply has a linkage down to the flywheel, the flywheel on the engine. And there we add 300 newton meters, because that's what we get from the pressure from the exhausts, without spending one single drop of fuel. That is a dual clutch gearbox. Here we are talking Formula One technique. We are double ingoing axles in the gearbox. That means that if we take one gear, ah, first I should say, odd gears on one axle, even gears on the other one. That means that if we take one gear step, we can switch gears without losing the torque. That is really interesting if you go on very hilly conditions and you want to keep a good average speed. If you start with this gearbox fully loaded on an uphill, compare the normal eye shift and this one, this one is extremely much faster because it will take every gear and you will never lose speed or force when doing the gear shifting. One motor, two gear gearbox, and the conventional drive line. One motor, one gear, and then the two gears are in the middle. 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 You will share it with 8.6 billion people. Because together, we can shape the world. So, well, come on. Thank you. This way out. Oh, go in, go in. Oh, 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 go in. 볼보의 공장입니다. 예태보리에 있는 볼보 본진에 있는 